Hi Best Buds, it's Kathy with Kathy's Garden and I'm so happy that you've joined me today. Today we're going to be making what I have entitled Nested Envelopes, Two Flip Books, Three Pockets. Oh, what another junk journal idea that you can make for a simple gift that you can have on hand to give to that special someone. I have used Chapter One papers and this kit that I've use these papers from. They have entitled Pink Bouquet. I have some Crimson Heart Studio Sari Silk right here. I'll link her shop down below. And I've used the Crinkled Seam Binding from my Scrap Cabin shop. I'll link her shop down below as well. And there's a coupon for this. I've got a bulb pen right here with three little gems on it. Oh, I think that's sweet. I love these muted colors. I think they're really soothing. Let's open it up. There's an eyelet right here in which the sari silk is uh, put through. And we've got a label with a little bit of lace. And this is our first pocket here. And it is a coffee dyed index card. Now you could stamp that or glue a fussy cut on. You could decorate it however you wish. I have just lightly decorated this. I'm letting the papers speak for themselves. Flip this over and this is your first flip pad. There's four pages here. I was thinking maybe I could put a little pocket right here for another tuck spot. That's an idea in case you want to use it. I decided I really didn't want to make mine quite that bulky. There's another envelope pocket right here with a pink dyed index card, some lace and a label. And we have one more flip book right here with four pages that you can journal on. Once again, you could do a pocket here if you wanted. And over here, one more index card, some lace and a label. I love how this has come together and we're going to make one together. So I thought that since I used digitals in this project, maybe we could use a paper pad. Now when you're selecting your papers, I selected two with this teal color and one with the white. So when I stack them, this is going to be my smallest envelope. This is going to be my medium envelope, and this is going to be my larger envelope, or vice versa. I want the teal to sandwich into the white background. The sizes of the envelope that you need to, to do is you need to cut the largest one 8 inches by 8 inch. The next one is 7 by 7, 7 inches by 7 inches. And the third one is 6 inches by 6 inches. Now I'm going to cut my papers and then we will make our envelopes together. I have my squares all cut out. I also need to mention that this is cardstock. I used uh, cardstock from the paper pad here and I did coffee dye the back. And on the printables, on the digitals, I printed them onto cardstock paper. All right, so with that said, let's make some envelopes. Now, if you have been with me before, you know that I make my own envelopes. I do not have a special machine to do that. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you cut your square even. That's important. Then you're going to take a ruler and you're going to line up your corners and then you're going to put a little mark here in the center. And then you're going to turn it and you're going to put a mark. You're going to line this point up with this point. So I'm also putting it on the grid mark here and lining my ruler up. And it's very important that you try to get them as even or lined up as well as possible. Because I always like to say, you don't want any wonky envelopes. Now, I would like to have the print paper on the outside, although I 
think it's really pretty to have some printed paper on the inside as well. Even though we did cover it up, or I did cover it up with a flip pad. So if you have double-sided cardstock, you could use that for this project. And I just coffee dyed mine because why? Well, just like the look of coffee dyed. I always like to look to see. I think I would like um, this to be pulled in. You want to put this point at the intersection of your two lines and then crease. I'm going to use a bone folder because it is cardstock and rather stiff. We're going to take the opposite point and we're going to put them right together just like that and give it a crease. So now your points are intersected at the cross roads of those two lines just like that. Now you need to decide, do you want this to be your flap or this to be your flap? It doesn't really matter. They're both quite beautiful. I'm going to just turn it this way. And I'm taking this point and this point and lining it up on one of the grid marks. Trying to hold it the best I can still. And I'm going to fold this over approximately a half an inch. However much you fold it up, you need to fold up the same on the other side. So whether it's a, it's not a half an inch either. It's um, a gnat or something here. A fruit fly, that's what it is. It is, look, I got a handy dandy little measure. It's three eighths of an inch. <laughs> I bought myself a ruler. Okay, guys, some of you that really want measurements are going to enjoy that. <laughs> Others that don't really care like me, you're, you're not going to care. <laughs> okay, so lining up this part right here, the bottom of my envelope, on a grid, I'm going to fold my flap over approximately the same amount. Now, whether it's a, what would, what would we say, three-eighths or half-inch or whatever you choose, whatever you do, on this side, you need to do on this side. That's very important. That's a half an inch. Is this a half an inch? That's, no, not quite. Not quite a half an inch. This is definitely a half an inch on there. So, you know, somewhere around this, there. So let's open this up. And we're going to want to erase our marks. I did pretty dark marks so you could see. And there we are. Give that an erase. Do you see where the, well, let's, let's just highlight it so you can see. Just using my sponge so you can see what I am trying to show you. This highlights and just brings it to light so you can see. So going around so you can see what I want to show you. Now you can see right here. These little diamond spots, pie shapes, right here in the corners. We're going to remove those. And I always like to remove it to where I cut inside the fold. So I'm going to cut that mark out, basically. So just trimming it like that. And I don't take one to measure the other. I don't do that. I just Trim it out the best I can. If you take a little more out of one side than you do the other, it's okay. It's pretty forgiving. Now, I wouldn't make it super large, you know. I wouldn't get too carried away. All right, one more to go. All right. Didn't do a very good job there. I need to do a little better. A little more cutting here. There, now that comes right out. All right, so now we look just like that. The next thing that we want to do is we're going to fold in the sides. I think this was, <clears throat> yeah, I like that as a flap. And this one, now I like to line my little point up right here. And I'm going to fold this down as straight as I can. And you want to catch it just right before those two intersect. Those two pieces. 
I'm going to fold it in that way. That looks a little crooked to me, but it will probably be all right. <laughs> Try to fold it straight. It's hard to do. I think that that fold is a little more difficult. All right. So I've already inked everything up. And so this is now ready to be glued down. We're going to be using, I'm using my art glitter glue. Now you use the glue of your choice. I'm going to glue my little flap down first. So, oh, yeah, I took my pin out. Someone said if it's not a stainless steel pin, it's going to rust and ruin my, my, um, my glue. So I took it out because I have no idea if it's stainless steel or not. So what I think I'll do, I'm going to clean this out first, is what I think I'm going to do is put that pin in some um, water and see if it rusts. And if it doesn't rust, then I can use it because I can tell that it does keep the, um, the line of glue going freely where it, it kind of clogs up sometimes this way. So I've just added glue on either side, but not there. And we're going to fold it down and incorporate those pieces on the side in. So now it looks just like an envelope. It's perfect, right? All right. So now what I need to do is I need to do the exact steps that I did here. Lining it up, point to point, making a line, point to point, making a line, fold it up, fold it up. Okay, you've got the message. <laughs> I'm going to do it on these two, and then we'll continue. I have my three envelopes all made. So this was my base, but I've determined to be my base. I determined this one to be my next, and this one to be my top. Now what I'd like to do is position these so that there's just about enough, same, same amount, space between the three and as I look over here on my example because it's double-sided you know you can see different colors here well I thought we could cut some pieces from our scraps and glue them on to the ends of our or the flap the inside flap of our envelopes if you don't have double-sided paper like I don't have double-sided paper. I actually think I'm just going to do it on this one right here. And the reason is because this is cardstock. And I'm really concerned with popping a hole in this with my hole punch and then putting my rivet in. So that's why I'm choosing only to cover my smallest one. Of course, you'll see it the most. So. I would like to ink this up really quick and then pop this on. I have already cut it to fit. Usually I don't. Usually I put it on there and then trim it out. And I am still going to have to trim a little bit because I have some extra. But that's going to look very nice. And that's something you can do. I'm sorry, I'm digging for my... Let's see what happened. I put something away wrong. <laughs> I'm, since I don't have double-sided uh, paper, and maybe you don't either, so that way you can have an idea on how you can still get some color on that inside flap. Now, this part. I'm going to position them the way I want them. Um, that's pretty good. And what I have found is that I'm going to add my glue to my uh, middle one right here. So I'm going to add my glue right here. All right. And then I'm going to press it down. And I'm actually going to pull it back. I'm going to press it down and pull it back, hopefully, <laughs> to get it so that it won't buckle. Okay, hopefully, because you can see it moves. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing for this one. I'm going to put, I put that on the wrong side, guys. Oh, no, I did not. Sorry, I had a moment there. 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh. Okay, we did not put it on the wrong side. This is the back of the envelope. <laughs> oh, I just saw that and I went, oh no, I've done it wrong. No, I didn't do it wrong. Everything is all good. Good, good, good. Okay, pressing it down and I'm just going to get this position so that, yes, it will move a little bit, but that way it will it will be the way it needs to be to be able to uh, to close and not bind. That is really pretty, isn't it, guys? Oh, goodness. So pretty. So the next thing is let's put our closure on. So I'm going to turn it this way. And yeah, this is still pretty wet. We just glued it. I'm going to mark right here with my pencil. I've lined it up on a line and I'm just kind of taking it in and I think I want it about right here. I want to include all three flaps. I'm living large because we're going to glue it. I'm living pretty large here. I think I might give it just a second while I grab a little bit of sorry silk and um, some papers because we've got to put our flip books in. Right, so I'm going to grab some papers. I'm going to let this uh, dry just a little bit so we can put a hole in it. All right, so I do believe we can punch our hole now. So I just have a standard hole punch and I'm going to punch that hole right out. And then I have a eyelet. Now, if you don't have eyelets, that's fine. You could use a hole saver. You could leave it plain. There are quite a few layers of cardstock here. So it is quite firm. And I'm placing in my eyelet into my machine. Pressing down. I'm going to do it the opposite way because I've got a little piece that's kind of come up on it. I want to make sure I get that pressed in. There, that's much better. There we are. Now, I would like to bring in a little bit of sorry silk and some crinkled seam binding from my scrap cabin shop and from Crimson Heart Studios. Now this says, says it's sea mist and I do believe that's correct. Sometimes I put the wrong ones back on, but I do believe that's correct. I think that goes beautiful with that, doesn't it? Now, a lot of you have seen me do this before. I am using my glue gun and I'm laying my crinkled seam binding on top of my glue. Now, you don't have to have hot glue to do this. You can do this with any type of glue that will glue your fabric. And I put it in little sections because I have to get in position to place my seam binding down before my hot glue decides to get cool and then it won't stick anymore and I'm just gently pushing my seam binding with my thumb up to my pointer finger so it's kind of this motion just like that and I'm going to work my way all the way around and when I get to the point here of my flap of my envelope going to position this around this way. If I can't straighten this out, I'm going to put a little bit right here. I'm going to lay this down just like this. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing down the other side. I'll switch my fingers of my hand. I kept my <laughs> the same fingers but different hand. <laughs> and just pushing it and it glides nicely because it's gliding on your glue. So it's not difficult. It does probably take a little bit of practice. I've been doing this for so long, but I'm sure it did take practice. Everything seems to take practice, right guys? And I'm just going to trim it off. All right, now let's talk about, oh my goodness, isn't that sweet? Let's talk about our flip books. Now I prepped. I was waiting for that to dry and I was getting the colors for the trim. 
I made a four page flip book. I sewed mine with my machine. Now, I know not everybody has a machine. Not everybody likes to sew with the machine. You could staple this if you don't mind staples. And where this goes is this is our first little flip, our first envelope. We're going to glue it right on here just like that. So I'm actually, no, I'm going to use my my art glitter glue. You use the glue of your choice. I'm not sure that I would use a glue stick, I think. I think I've got stuck again. Oh, good heavens. I think a glue stick is not strong enough for this. Um, I think you need something that's wetter. And so maybe you have some white school glue or something like that. But I would use a wetter glue. And I'm going to pop it right in. Now, you don't want to pop it so close to your fold that it's going to interfere with that. You don't want any interference with closing of your, your envelope here. I'm actually going to pop on a couple of paper clips just to hold it. Now, this is our second one. And I've got a second one prepared. And, you know, you just measure it so it, you know, fits nicely within the size of your envelopes and you could make these bigger if you want to make bigger envelopes I'm not sure littler that would you know that's pretty tedious for me but if you're really good with small things it would be really cute small too all right so I've got the second one on whoa I just stuck that right in the glue that probably wouldn't be a good thing to pop back on after you've stuck it in the glue all right, now I've got some journaling cards. Now I just took index cards and I cut them to fit into the pockets. So this is for the smaller one. And if you want to decorate these up, you could put a uh, fussy cut on it. You could put a stamp. You could get your stamps out and put some kind of cute little stamp on there. I'm not sure I'd put something super thick because, you know, you don't want to get this too awful thick. And then I've got one for this one also. So let's get that in there. Now on my example, I just took some lace and I placed it right across here with a label. Now I'm not going to do that on this one, <clears throat> but you remember how that looked. Just a little bit of lace with the label. And I did that for all three of them. I thought, that would be sweet. Now, when you decorate <clears throat> these, you need to remember, like, before you glue it down, when you put it, if you put something right here, see, it's going to show when you shut it. So you might want to shut it before you glue it down to see if you're going to like how that looks after it's all closed. Now, this beautiful color of Sorry Silk, I thought just went fantastic with the papers and this crinkled seam binding. I'm just going to thread it through. I'm going to wrap it around. And I'm not going to wrap it around a couple times because I want all of this pre beautiful paper and the crinkled sari silk and everything to, to just show itself off. So I'm just going to tie my bow. Now I might add um, maybe a little gem or something and Remember on this one, I added a bulb pin. So you can add some charms to it if you would like. But guys, this is a nice little gift to make or maybe to pop on top of the journal you're making on. Maybe even to send it out in Happy Mail because it's not that large or bulky. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. I invite you to subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in my next video. I'll see you there, guys. Bye now.